This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Doyle Davidson, servant apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas, sent by God to your house to declare unto you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God. Amen. First Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, tell us what the gospel is. How that Jesus Christ died for our sins. According to scripture, he was buried. He rose again the third day, according to the scripture. Spare the Lord upon me. He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the broken heart, preach the livers to the captives, recovering the sight to the blind, set at liberty, then better bruised. Thank God. The word is neither even in your heart, in your mouth, there's a word of faith, which I preach. You confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised you from the dead, you shall be saved with the heart, man believing unto righteousness, with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. There's the power of God unto salvation. Everyone who believes to the Jew verse and also to the Greek therein. It's the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by his faith. I want to welcome everyone to this broadcast. Amen. Receiving it on live stream, Roku, Apple TV, YouTube, and man, other devices, and shortwave radio. Thank God. I am struggling to talk, overcoming a stronghold. And it's not easy to breathe and talk. So, I want to say, on my right, co-host, Terry Brown. Good morning. Good morning. On my left, co-host, Kathy Davidson. Good morning. And then, to her left, and the race apostle. Good morning. Good morning. And then, that guy, and then. Amen. And on the wire from Colorado, Kathy Courier. Good morning. Good morning, Kathy. Amen. We also have, uh, is Aaron Turner here? Yes. Good morning, Noel. What? Yes. Yes? He said good morning. Uh -huh. Well, good morning, Apostle Aaron Turner. And We've got Brian Butter here. Good morning. Good. Yes. Let's go back to the director's seat and introduce Apostle David Gasparite. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Ben. He <laughs> runs over, switches the camera to himself, smiles, says hello, and then runs back and switches the camera back. Is that what he does? <laughs> That's what he does. <laughs> Good night. Well, you know, he used to be a wrestler. Amen. Amen. And we have Pastor Paul Peters here, right? Amen. Yes. Have I already introduced him? No. Thank I nope, you haven't. Thank God. I'm sorry, but my memory is harder to handle. Amen. What do you say? We bring in the my girls. Amen.
My girls, I've been in this seat or this position with my eyes beginning in December 08. And it's been a strange, strange walk. I haven't been able to read the word. And just have stumbled and been awkward and humbled and you name it. Uh, learning what happened to me. The first real thing that I saw, I knew what it said. And Kathy D brought it to me in 10, 2010, in Galatians uh, 4 and 6. Is that right? That's right. Would you like to read that? I sure will. Let people know that how bold you were to tell me. After four days of shaking. <laughs> Amen. I kept telling God, God kept telling me, I want you to sh tell Dole this. And I kept saying, uh, I'm not anybody that needs to tell Dole this. And that went on for about four days. And then one day, I know what Eli, uh, was it Elihu said? I am full of matter. And if I don't open my mouth, I'm going to burst. And that's what it was. It's Doyle, come here. All right, in verse 14 of Galatians 4. Well, let's go back up. Verse 12. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as you are. You have not injured me at all. You know how through the infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at the first. In my temptation, which was in my flesh, you despised not nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Where is then the blessedness you spoke of? For I bear you record that if it had been possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and given them to me. And I therefore become your enemies because I tell you the truth. Just the fact, and like I said when I was a school teacher, if you look at your context clues, you know what his infirmity was, his eyes. Because why in the world would they give their own eyes for Paul if it was his legs? It was his eyes. So Paul was having difficulty with his eyes. And then he comes to the point in chapter 6, dealing with the Galatians. In verse 11, he says, You see how large a letter I have written unto you with my own hand. So now we know that Paul has overcome that infirmity because he wrote the letter with his own hands, a large letter. And then in verse 17, he tells us, From henceforth, let no man trouble me. For I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. We can glean from that that his infirmity was caused by the people he was ministering to. Amen. Well, Katie told me that. I've read that for years. But the one thing I think I had overlooked was someone had troubled him. You see, I'm not much of an accuser of the brethren or anybody else. I just kind of shrug my shoulders and go on. One day, Kathy D. read uh, Psalm 143 to me. Amen. That got me really got to me the first time I saw something. I believe Paul Peters read that as well to me. Maybe first, I don't even know. No, you did. Come on. Let's read it. Psalm 143. Yes. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications. In thy faithfulness answer me, and in thy righteousness. And enter not into judgment with thy servant, for in thy sight shall no man living be justified. For the enemy has persecuted my soul. He has smitten my life down to the ground. 
He has made me to dwell in darkness as those that have been long dead. Therefore is my spirit overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is desolate. Do you want me to go on? Yes, I want you to read that. All right. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all thy works. I muse on the work of thy hands. I stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsteth after thee as a thirsty land. Hear me speedily, O Lord. My spirit faileth. Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like them that go down into the pit. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk, for I lift up my soul unto thee. Deliver me, O Lord, from mine enemies. I flee unto thee to hide me. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me unto the land of uprightness. Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake. For thy righteousness' sake, bring my soul out of trouble. And of thy mercy, cut off mine enemies. And destroy all them that afflict my soul, for I am thy servant. Amen. Amen. I am thy servant. And like we've shared before, this is a psalm of David. When he is trying to get away from Saul, who's trying to kill him. And he's talking about his soul. He's not talking about the physical body trying to get away from Saul. But we have to remember here that this is after David killed Goliath. This is after David was anointed. This is after David was anointed king of Israel. And yet he's suffering. His soul is suffering these afflictions. I think an interesting part of this is what David said. I'm your servant. Amen. God didn't deny it. Right? Right. You know what's shocking? That God would treat a servant that way. Well, see, the church, the, the, the church is saying that God just pets everybody. That's incredible. Katie, you, in Colossians 1, 23. 20, is it 23 or 24? Well, 23 or more. Yeah. Would you read that? It says in verse 24, this is Paul. He said, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. Suffer. Make up what? That which is left behind? That which is left behind of the afflictions of Christ. Right. In my flesh. In his flesh. See, that, that's in the Bible books. One of the things that I've learned over the years, there, well, I think I've found... 26 apostles Amen. Uh, in the New Testament. There wouldn't be anywhere else. 26 apostles. Not everybody's an apostle. And one of the things that I noticed when things got bad in Jerusalem, everybody scattered but the apostles. Amen. Right? Amen. They could take the heat. Right. I didn't volunteer. You know, I, I remember back when you shared with us early in the, the, the 90s about you saw that there were 26 apostles in the New Testament. Right. I thought, hmm, and I went to go prove it to myself. Darn if you weren't right. Really? <laughs> I think I counted 25 or something like that, but well, but we were taught that there were only twelve, no more. Yeah, the, I found I've said there are the twenty-five or twenty-six, but I think it's twenty-six, and I hunted them out myself. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Now, where are we going? The next. Oh. Acts 26, Catherine Carter just pointed this out 
to me, what, yesterday? Amen. Yes, I don't know morning. how. Well, I didn't read this stuff as pertaining to me for years. In fact, I started reading it as pertaining to me in the last few years. Would you read there in Acts 26? Me? Or something? Right. I'm going to begin at verse 13 where Paul's talking to the king. At midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. But rise, stand upon thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee. You see, only the last, what, couple of three years have I believed that I had Paul's revelation. That wasn't easy for me to accept. But I felt God was saying that to me. But I wasn't about to stand up and say, God has told me that I have Paul's revelation. I knew the pressure, the heat would come serious enough once I said it. But I'd prefer to believe it before I said it. Amen. Thank God. I got it bad. I got it bad. Amazing. <clears throat> I, I said something yesterday. I think it's probably wrong. But it says, what, first delivered from the people? It says, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles. I think Paul could have been talking about the Jews, but I don't think he was. You see, I was a, a veterinarian, and I worked, did a lot of horses for very, very rich and wealthy people, very strong, and they did put me in bondage. Strong spirits, but I overcame a lot of it. Then I think when I was starting overcoming the Gentiles was in a charismatic movement. Amen. You follow me? I follow you. In '60, no, that's not right. I'm not going on. Uh, but then the people that God sent me to. And God sent me to Plano. Told me to come to Plano in 1980 uh, and speak to the people of Plano. You've heard that. And when I got here, I met spirits that I had not met. All kinds. Wasn't too long after I'd been here. Uh, a lady came to me and said, uh, she was sent by a messenger to tell me I'd ball. And that wasn't Jesus that sent me. I said, well, Jesus sent me, and I won't ball. Amen. And guess what? I'm still up. And she's nowhere around. No, I a lot of mark, you know that? Amen. But it made me sad. God, why? Because he sent me. Amen. Amen. He sent me to do what we're doing. I couldn't make it. A man or a woman that tries to 
through in the flesh, what God wants is foolish. Amen. You can't do it. Amen. So, <clears throat> I'm now changed by thinking that the people were my enemies were people that I was speaking to and I was trying to teach. And you couldn't teach most of them anything. Uh, the, I think the, the worst uh, the worst mistake I ever heard was somebody reading uh, and this person was an engineer, intelligent, uh, successful, tried to tell me, the Bible said it rained before it rained. I, huh? You ought to read it to the brilliant people. If you're an engineer, be alert, beware, and don't be stupid. And you won't be. That's in Genesis, what? Right. Verse 6, 7, 8, I don't know. It's how the ground, how the earth was watered. It's Genesis 2. Genesis 2, verse 6. Uh, well, starting in verse 5, it says, Every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist up from the earth. There went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. That Genesis what? Genesis 2, verses 5 and 6. Now, does that, does that speak to you that it rained? Before the mist watered the earth? Is there anybody here that blind? Well, look, Satan can blind you. I'm not making fun of you. I'm telling you, uh, in 2 Corinthians 4, or is it 1 Corinthians 4, uh, people, uh, because they wouldn't believe, Satan blinded them to the truth. Amen. Is that right? Amen. You, did you know America uh, is so educated? I heard a faith preacher say um, that Africa, they might have demons, but America's too educated. That, that's how stupid education can lead you astray. Amen. Well, didn't God say to you that your wisdom and your knowledge had perverted you? He told me that about me. Yeah. Right. Yeah, perverted me. And back. I got it back. Referring to your university <laughs> education? Yeah, six years. The rest of us with university educations, I didn't figure that exempted us. <laughs> well, I just went longer than most of you. And back. I got it bad. I'm bad. So what are we doing? You didn't read Psalm 142. It has the good part, the last verse. I'll read it. All right. Hate to stop at 143. It's nice that we got 142 in there. <laughs> I cried unto the Lord with my voice. With my voice to the Lord did I make my supplication. I poured out my complaint before him. I showed before him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. In the way wherein I walked, have they privily laid a snare for me? I looked on my right hand and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. I cried unto thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. 
Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall compass me about, for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. Amen. That was at the third verse. Mm -hmm. My spirit was overwhelmed. Thou knowest my past. Amen. Is that it? Yes. Well, listen, we're about, well, in 17, I believe it's when KB read that to me. And I said, what? Read that again. I said, you mean the Lord knew where I was at? You weren't sure. Huh? You were not sure at that time. No, I wasn't. I didn't know the Lord knew where I was at. Amen. Now, he may rebuke me sharply and say I did, but I sure didn't think I knew. <laughs> Amen. But one thing that I relied on, you know, God sent me to preach the gospel. Amen. And I preached the gospel to this country, America, since 19... 81, and before that, but 81, make no mistake about it, that's when I walked into this building and started speaking publicly here in my own building. Amen. Thank God. But I knew the gospel, and I believed it. I'm saying, I know I believe the gospel. I will not depart from the gospel. And I would say, I'm coming out of here. Amen. Right? Right. Amen. And you know why I thought I'd come out? Because I believe the gospel. Amen. Jesus preached the gospel. And he got out of hell. Amen. With the gospel. Amen. I had faith. And Hebrews 4 too. It says the gospel was preached unto them as well as unto us. Us being the writer of Hebrews. And as well as unto us. But they didn't mix faith with the gospel and it didn't profit them. Amen. Did you know that's what's wrong with you? You don't believe the gospel? You've had it preached from this pulpit and television, and radio, and everywhere else since 1981. But you don't believe the gospel. You don't have a revelation of it. That's why you can't believe it. You get a revelation. Believe it. You'll get a revelation. And mix faith with it, and it'll start working in your life. And you won't be looking for some man to give you food and drink. And I'm talking to a woman. You need to repent and stop what you're up to. Thank God. You're in danger of hellfire, I can tell you that. Thank God. They got him back. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God. 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 Amen. Amen. I'm overcoming. Thank God. If you will permit me for this, this message will go on shortwave and live stream all over the world. 
you are referring to the gospel, I'd like to read the, uh, the definition of the gospel. Oh, of what we preach. And it's in uh, 1 Corinthians 15. This is the gospel that Jesus preached. This is the gospel that Paul preached. This is the gospel that Peter preached. This is the gospel Paul and Peter told everyone else to preach. And it's specific. Amen. It is not Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It is specific. Right here, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you. See, Paul preached it. Which, which also you have received, and wherein you stand. Amen. By which also you are saved. You are saved. Your salvation is through the gospel. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, what did he preach? Unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, which I also received. And here is the definition, the specific definition of the gospel. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Notice what the gospel is. It is that Jesus died according to the scriptures, but not only died, he was buried. And he rose again according to the scriptures. According to what God had planned before Adam even came to this earth. Amen. That is the definition of the gospel. That is what we need to preach. And Matthew, Mark 16 says, if you preach this gospel, that Jesus died, was buried, and rose again, then the signs follow. The devils are cast out. People are healed. People speak in tongues. That's what brings the miracles, preaching this gospel and no other. Amen. Amen. You satisfied? <laughs> yes. Uh, are we ready to praise the Lord? I'd like to say one small comment. All right. I was raised in a couple of different denominations and I was adamant that Jesus died for my sins Jesus died for my sins you know what if you stop there you're not believing the gospel Amen. first Corinthians 15 later on in the chapter it says if Jesus is not raised from the dead your believing's in vain and I had to listen to myself when I came here and was challenged that I didn't believe the gospel and you listen to yourself and if you're not dependent on that resurrected Lord Jesus Christ, you're not believing the gospel, you're not preaching the gospel. Amen. Amen. And it says about that resurrection, if Jesus had not been resurrection, re resurrected, right. then our sins weren't forgiven. Mm -hmm. You're still in them. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, the Father, the resurrection of Jesus happened because your sins were forgiven. It sat at Jesus' sacrifice satisfied the Father. And because he satisfied the Father is the reason he raised Jesus from the dead. Otherwise, Jesus would still be in hell paying for your sins. But he was raised. That's a glorious thing. You can be assured your sins are forgiven because Jesus is raised from the dead. That proved that the Father forgave him. How many times have I said, Father, I'm standing right outside the tomb the empty tomb, You're, my sins are forgiven because there's nobody in there. You have forgiven all of us by raising him from the dead. But you have to believe, and that's what you did. Picturing yourself right outside that tomb, you have to believe it for it to apply to you. Right? I'll add this. Growing up, I, I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I also believed he was raised from the dead. I talked to him. As a, as a little boy. What I didn't know is that that was the gospel. Amen. And what I didn't know was, was that was the power of God for my salvation for everything. Amen. That's what I didn't know. Amen. And that's what I got when I first started listening to this ministry, was that gospel is what I was to trust for for everything. And that when God, what God worked in Jesus, he would also work in me. If I would just trust in it for everything. Amen. It doesn't matter how small or how large it is. It was power for everything. That's what I didn't hear growing up. 
And that's what Dole mentioned earlier, and I'll reiterate. He said that the Hebrews were taught that gospel, but it didn't work for them because they didn't mix faith with it. And we have to believe it. We have to trust it. We have to use our faith with the gospel. And that's what brings it to man. That's what manifests it. I love what God said at the women's meeting. I, I, I mean, it was a perfect illustration. When I was in the sign business, you've seen marquees. The marquee takes a special glue for that marquee to stick to the acrylic, a special glue. And it comes in two containers. One is a can and the other is just this little bottle. And you can take the can of glue and you could put it on those, those marquees and it wouldn't work. And it, it, it wouldn't stick. But when you added the activator to that can, that glue, once you got it on, it never let go. In fact, if you got it on wrong, you ruined a big piece of acrylic. That activator, well, that's the way we work. You've got the word of God. You've got the gospel. But it will not manifest. It will not work. It will not stick until you add the activator. What is the activator? Your faith your faith. When you mix your faith with the word of God and the gospel, that's when you, it's manifested in front of you. That's when you're forgiven. That's when you're justified. That's when you're sanctified. When your faith is working in it. I've got to share something that happens morning hours this morning. And I forgot all about it. But I was awake and speaking grace, grace, grace. And I thought, grace is everywhere. I think it's, is it Acts 4, 31, 2, 3, 4, where grace was on them all. Great grace was right. on them all. Right? Yes. And I thought, my goodness, for the last two times, yesterday and the day before, I really broke through a lot of grace. Amen. A lot of it. The day before, I was weeping. No, it wasn't weeping. My heart was broken. And I said, I forgive them all. I forgive them all. And I believe I was forgiving everyone for their persecution. And then, I'm not sure that grace is not free to everyone with me. I know it is if we get there, but last night or this morning, I was encouraged. All I wanted to speak was grace, grace, grace. Amen. All right? Are we ready for songs? Amen.
Yes. Yeah. 
in my heart you brought to light to me a child of darkness became a child of light and when my Saying is no one worthy 
joyous shout in the honor of the rock of our salvation. Come before him with thankful hearts. Let us sing him songs of praise.
your heart be troubled. Victory is here. Jesus Christ has risen. There is nothing to fear. So God and not be weary. Walk and never change. Lift up your voice to heaven and bow in glory and
Greater is he that is in me Greater is he that is in me Than he that is in the world Greater is he that is in me Greater is he that is in me Greater is he that is in me Than he that is in the world Satan's like a roaring lion Roaming to and fro Seeking whom he may devour The Bible tells me so Many souls have been his prey Caught in some weak hour But God has given us today His overcoming power Greater is he that is in me Greater is he that is in me Greater is he that is in me Than he that is in the world On that day of Pentecost A mighty rushing wind Blew into the upper room To baptize all of them With a power greater than Anyone had known And I'm so glad we got it too I wanna tell the whole wide world Now tell them with me Greater is he that is in me Greater is he that is in me Greater is he that is in me Than he that is in the world God is greater than the wisest man Greater than the power of sin Greater than the gates of hell Greater than anyone can tell Greater than the richest king Greater than anything Greater, oh greater Greater, yes greater Greater is he that is in me Than he that is in the Jesus Christ. God bless you. Now, would you just give me a minute? <laughs> right. I am told that a very good friend of mine is sitting close to Paul Peters. His father was with me in vet school the third year he went to heaven. His father and I were business partners. We bought a house moved it, sold it, wrecked houses, all day. There wasn't much we didn't do. But the Lord took him to heaven. Amen. His name was Bill Green and his son, Mark Green, is right here, was two years old, when his mother went to heaven. Hi, Mark. How you doing? Turn on Paul's mic, please. Okay, go ahead. It's good to be here. 
Try it again. It's good to be here, Doyle. Hey, man. Can you hear him? I can. Okay. Did you know you may be shocked, but the first service in this building, January the 4th, 1981, Mark Green was in attending. I was here. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking it was May of 1981. What did he say? He said he was thinking it was May of 1981. May of 1981. No, sir. No, sir. Well, you're right. <laughs> Now you know how things run. I, I was here. Yeah, I was here. I remember I sat right over uh, Dole to your left on the uh, first or second row, right where you're looking. Amen. Amen. Didn't you say he's the only one here today that was here at that meeting? Is Bruce Geary there? <laughs> but you were not in that meeting, right? You were in Aggie Land. You were? were? Yeah. Well, thank God. Then we got two. There's two of us. Right. Hey, Amen. Well, anyway, Mark, you have honored me coming here. It blesses me to be here. <laughs> it really does. I believe you. I know your mother, your father, you and your two sisters. Ann and Jan. Six or eight weeks old. Yes. They're identical twins. They used to think we were triplets, all blonde hair and blue eyes. And I said, no, I'm older, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but they were almost as tall as me when we were about 12, 13. He said they, were, they, they thought that they were triplets, oh. but he's older. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I've never had a person in business that I got along with so well and loved, his, loved him as his dad. You're going to have to listen to a couple of things. Bill and I were pretty bold. We got up one morning about 4 o'clock, drove to Iowa. I think it was Des Moines. We didn't have any money. We went to the bank. We were both in vet school, had her ID cards. We told the bank we just didn't have time to cash a check. They said, well, we're going to believe you guys. And they cashed a check. We went east to Mount Pleasant, Iowa. There was a sign, Clover Hay for sale. We had a truck with all 236 males. We pulled in as a school teacher. She said, you know, I'm gonna trust you guys. We gave her a check for her hay. We barely made it to the bank in time to pay it. That's the kind of thing Bill Green and Donald Davidson would do. You picked up the hay in Iowa, and then you drove back down to, to Columbia. No. Oh, where'd you drive to? To the Arkansas line. Yes. Yeah. That's sold it. And sold it for more, obviously, than you bought it for. Oh, yes. <laughs> 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 I'm not going to bore you with all these, but we had a lot of fun. Well, I tell you what, for college kids, because 
I've met a, couple, a bunch of college kids that that was an entrepreneur group right there. Yes. I mean, to drive up where there was good hay, and take it where they were having trouble growing hay at the time. Well, I've got to tell one more story. I'd like to hear it. Uh, <laughs> you say you'd like to hear it? Yes, sir. Okay. The um, school engineer, university engineer, came to Bill and I one day and said, you know, I've been watching you two, and there's nothing you can't do. Well, what do you got in mind? A chemistry building, four stories high, half a, well, I forgot how wide it was, and half a block long, short blocks. He said, you guys need to buy that record. You can do it. I said, you think? Oh, yeah. I've watched you. So Bill and I went and crawled up on the top of it, four floors, got in the attic. My father was a builder. I knew something about building. That thing had 22-inch rafters. Wow. Molded together. Made. They were trusses, really. Yeah. So I said to Bill, we've got to make money before we can do this. We have to have some cash. So I think we should ask 50,000 in advance. And that would be uh, what we pay them. <laughs> they said, 50,000? You want us to pay you to move it? Well, sure. You know, Bill went to heaven when they sold that building. A wrecking company in Chicago bid fifty thousand bucks to remove it. That's enough of my stories. Wow. <laughs> hey, man. Thank you all. I'll see you at six. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas, 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.